topic for sure. Soil health is is going to make a big difference because for every one percent you increase one percent carbon, you increase your soil levels. You'll you'll increase the water carrying capacity about fifteen thousand gallons per acre in the top twelve inches of soil. And so, like if you go from you know whatever you're at right now, which is probably you know just you know, less than one, I'm guessing if it's just gravel. And, and you get up to, you know, 1%, so 15,000 gallons, 2%, that's 30,000 gallons, 3%, that's 45,000 gallons. Um, and you up, up until about 4%, um, you know, which is, you know, 60,000 gallons per acre in the top 12 inches. And after that, it starts to kind of taper off. But if you can, uh, which is not hard to do, you know, there's, there's all kinds of folks that have increased the soil, their soil levels from, 1% to even, you know, Gabe Brown did it to 8% on his farm in, um, I believe it was, it took him 20 years in, in one field because he didn't know what he was doing, but now he figures he can do it a lot faster. So <clears throat> the, because um, carbon is like a, is a, is a sponge and it literally holds more water than, uh, uh, than soil that doesn't have it. And so I think that for sure would be one of my strategies is, is finding some way to increase the soil carbon. And so you're already doing rotational grazing, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. You're also doing, um, you know, bale grazing, which is also really, really useful. And so one of the things we do in our farm is, because uh, we also have very low organic matter soils, because we hate our land for, you know, 30 years. And so we basically mined all of our carbon out of our soils and sold it to other people. And uh, <laughs> now, yeah. now we're trying to get it back. Uh, but we, our rule is we basically just take the, you know, the worst you know, 10 or 15 acres, that's just based on our, our herd size. And, and we'll, you know, bale graze on that, the worst portion of the farm every year for, for the winter. And then we just rotate around. And what we're seeing is in one year, we'll take our worst field and it'll become our best field. You know, it'll, it'll double or triple production in a single year, just from bale grazing or spreading compost on it. And so, you know, it sounds like you're already, you know, doing stuff like that. And that's, that's kind of the lowest level um, offering, but because you live in a desert, <clears throat> so the, the, there's actually kind of, there's two definitions of what a desert is. One is, which is a, it's a, this is a bad definition. They just say, you know, any place in the world that gets less than a certain amount of rain. And, you know, typically it's like 15 inches. If you get less than 15 inches, you're a desert. Well, that doesn't make any sense because um, you know, like the Sahara desert gets 12 inches of rain, but you get 12 inches of rain. And I also get 12 inches of rain. And yet our properties look very, very different. And so yeah. the, the real factor is it's, it's how much rain you get uh, versus how much rain you lose or, or the evapotranspiration. And so you live in an area where, um, and without looking at the maps, because there are evapotranspiration maps, um, but you probably are losing, my guess is two to three feet of rain or moisture every year you know 24 to 36 yeah. inches of moisture every year and um and so that's through evaporation so coming back to that forest analogy but yet if you walk into that forest no one's flood irrigating it no one's managing it and yet it's building topsoil so it has it has high organic matter and and it's growing you know these beautiful trees and sure their roots are reaching down into the water table but the 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 core kind of uh, trick that they're they're achieving is is shade um you know the shade is 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 way more valuable than mulch in a desert you know you you can put have a really good organic matter layer on your soil but the it, it's still not the same as having you know an overstory tree that's taking that solar energy and and buffering it um mm -hmm. before it even hits the hits the ground so my my gut is for your property some kind of a silvo pasture system with you know with trees so say uh you know we put in some uh, uh you know some lines here and and i'm not sure if i'm just going to follow kind of your existing um you know uh what are the dikes the dikes there and because they're essentially those dikes are essentially swales that you've got yeah and and so if you could put you know tree belts along those swales and uh, you know spaced whatever that distance is apart let's measure it here and feet 
Uh, so I mean, it's 50 feet apart. That's still a decent alleyway to graze down. But I, I want you to look at look at the these these trees here by this river, and you see how uh, you know this is probably the center of the tree right there. So we measure out well, that's 60 feet uh, yeah. where the shade is, right? And so you know if if you had these these tree rows, you know, spaced all across your property you know, down these, whatever that is, down these dikes, there's another one there or something, but say they're all spaced 50 feet apart or whatever, whatever that looks like. And maybe you might want to put in new dikes, you know, it might be worthwhile to, to survey this out, get really.